What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City match review, match reaction and match analysis. As you can see from the big smile on my face, Manchester City have beaten Manchester United by three goals to one to win the Manchester derby and stay a point behind Liverpool and set up a massive showdown Premier League clash next weekend away at Anfield against Liverpool. So, I'm going to speak about all the talking points from this game. So before I do crack on with this video, make sure, like always, if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe. It is free to subscribe. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Also, don't forget as well to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 100 likes is the aim. Finally, I want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. SofaScore will keep you up to date with all the latest scores for Manchester City, for any football side that you want to follow. And they're also keeping you up to date with all the latest sports, rugby union, rugby league, cricket, uh, basketball, NFL, all your sporting needs. It'll keep you up to date. It's a free app to download. Absolutely brilliant. Go and check it out. Very highly rated. Links and details there in the description. Anyone that does download the free Sofa Score app does help to support the future content created here on my channel. So, I'm going to crack on with this video. Manchester City. Going to start off first with the team lineups. I was very happy with Man City's starting 11. I weren't too sure if we was going to go with Kevin De Bruyne with him doing 90 minutes midweek against Luton Town. I thought we might have chosen to have taken him off uh, with 10 15 minutes uh, left of that game, which would have indicated to me that he's going to be rested basically ready for the derby. It never happened, so I weren't too sure if we were going to risk Kevin De Bruyne going in here or City were going to plan to do something a little bit different. Didn't really happen. De Bruyne did start. He's done another 90 minutes, so seems like he is over his injuries, touch wood. Uh, so that is really good. I suspect that City will now be doing quite a bit of rotation against FC Copenhagen. We're 3-1 up in that Champions League game. Still got work to do. Still got a tie to see off. We've still got a game to win there. And winning that game will be ideal preparation ahead of that match at Anfield next week. But... We needed to win this game today. It was a must-win game for Manchester City, and we've managed to do so. Liverpool managed to scab their way to a win against Nottingham Forest, and Manchester City have managed to, even though playing far better than what Manchester United did in both the first half and the second half, had nothing to show in the first half. They were 1-0 behind, and all of a sudden there was doubt. People were questioning Manchester City's capabilities, uh, and Manchester City managed to really show up there in the second half and showcase what they are all about and that they are ready for the fight and we're ready in the business end of the season to see the very best out of Manchester City. I was happy with Man City's intensity in the first half. I was happy with how Man City approached the game. The only thing we gave Manchester United was a sucker punch and it was a fantastic finish from Marcus Rashford. Surely even the most biased of blues out there would say that was an absolutely fantastic finish. It was disappointing with a long ball over that Bruno Fernandes had a bit of a free hit to take a touch and control the ball. Marcus Rashford takes no touch though. He just strikes the ball 30 yards out, clean as a whistle, in off the underside of the crossbar. Nothing the keeper can do. It was Man United's only effort on goal. Edison's not had anything to do today other than pick the ball out the back of his net. We restricted Manchester United to one pot look shot from 30 yards, which just our luck managed to go into the back of the net, but taking nothing away from that finish. And then it was all frustration for Manchester City. Uh, it wasn't like a typical low block approach that we've seen from the likes of Brentford, or even from Chelsea for that matter. I thought Manchester United gave City quite a bit of space to work with so we were creating opportunities both first half and second half Phil Foden missed a wonderful opportunity uh, in the first half good save from Anana and Erling Haaland right towards the end of the half missed that two yard sitter that I was happy to put my mortgage on that he would have bagged that and put that into the back of the net I'm sure Erling Haaland doesn't know how he didn't score that it was easier to score than it was to miss somehow it just didn't go into the back of the net. And we thought it's going to be one of them days. It's going to be another Chelsea at home here. Um, but Manchester City, second half, attacking the south stand. I'm a big fan of that. Hopefully Manchester City can start to listen and say, do you know what? Attacking the south stand, second half, seems to work. It's more motivated. I thought it helped in terms of atmosphere first half. I mean, uh, atmosphere for a derby game, not the best. 
but I certainly didn't think it was too bad either and certainly as the game went on and the game started to open up it turned into to me anyway I thought a very exciting derby game and the atmosphere did start to improve from there and I do believe that that's down to second half atmosphere Man City attacking the south stand and time and time again history shows Manchester City when we're attacking the south stand second half and we're needing big moments and big goals they happen so Hopefully that's, I think, I think, I certainly think it's something to consider for Manchester City in the long run. It was Manchester United that won the toss that decided to switch the two sides because Man City do normally attack the, the family stand in the second half. So I think that's just something worth bearing in mind. Uh, but yeah. I think today very much belongs to Phil Foden. He was outstanding for Manchester City. He'll have been disappointed to have missed that good opportunity in the first half, but second half uh, was clinical from Phil Foden. It was clinical from Manchester City. That first goal was a wonder strike. It was a wonderful goal. The Rashford goal and the Foden goal scored today in the derby. Two of the best derby goals that I've seen. Not the very best goal that I've seen in a derby, but certainly right up there in the top five, top ten goals scored in a derby. Both two outstanding finishes um, and then Phil Foden just seemed to pick up more and more confidence City saw sense to move Bernardo to the right and Phil Foden onto the left to try something new and it helped break Manchester United down in the 80th minute it was a wonderful finish again from Phil Foden but again United they gave City space they were getting forward they were trying to attack in numbers they weren't creating too much and they weren't sitting tight enough to City that City to me it was all just a case of City being able to pick Manchester United off and have that clinical touch surely Manchester United weren't deluded enough to think for 90 minutes that we're going to have a big off day in front of goal and we're going to spur three, four opportunities. It's just not going to happen. You always fancy City are going to score at least one. And the big difference that I saw here from this match against Chelsea at home, because we were two pretty similar games, was Manchester City scoring and giving ourselves half an hour to try and grab that two goal, uh, that second, that killer second goal, that uh, second goal for City, which ended up being so crucial. Didn't happen in the Chelsea game because we didn't give ourselves long enough to make it happen. In the derby, they gave themselves long enough to do it and made it happen. It was a good finish from Phil Foden. It was good build-up into the goal as well. It was just all-round good work from Manchester City and a well-taken goal at the end of it. And then Erling Haaland, I'm sure he feels much better from missing his sitter. Still manages to come out, even though not playing his best of games. Come out with a goal and score his 18th goal in the Premier League for Manchester City. And it sets things up really ni nicely now for us because we go into a match at Anfield. We're one point behind. I said before the game, United at home, Liverpool away, Arsenal at home. Minimum seven points. If we pick up nine points, we are firm favourites for the Premier League title. Three of them points ticked away. We know our next Premier League game at home is against Arsenal. But first before that, all focus will turn to Liverpool in that match at Anfield. But... We want to be successful come the end of the season and that doesn't just mean winning the Premier League. The Manchester City need to be taking every competition seriously which means we have to be focusing a game at a time. That's the recipe for success for Manchester City. That's what makes Man City so different to everybody else and why we are so successful. We are a focused team that focuses only on the game at hand. We've got a job to do against FC Copenhagen. We're 3-1 up. We still need to get the job seen out to the 90th minute and get through to the Champions League quarterfinals. So before we even start talking and thinking about Liverpool, we need to turn up. We've got a job to do against FC Copenhagen. So let's see if we can reach the Champions League quarterfinals because in the build-up to that Liverpool game, we've won this game. Great, but we could do with winning that game midweek as well. There's no better preparation for that match at Anfield than winning midweek. So... I will see you for the build-up for them games as well. But I'm very happy. Manchester is blue. Let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on the video. 100 likes is the aim. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries, and do go and check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore.
Thank you very much to SofaScore for sponsoring this video. Do go check them out. Links and details, they are in the description. Remember, it is a free app to download and is highly rated. And I'll see you all again real soon for the next Manchester City video. So I've been JSGC, bidding you all a farewell. Have a great rest of your weekend. Oh, it's so nice when Manchester City win and United lose. City, you've got me singing the blues. Peace. Ciao for now.